Court primarily recommended beach nourishment as the way to restore the beaches, the Gold Coast, to some, something of a, a useful and viable standard. There was a recommendation for a fairly quick injection of about 10 million cubic metres of sand onto the beaches. That was what we calculated was the deficit of a stable beach. Well, if you look at uh, dredging on the Gold Coast, we have two styles of dredging. We have what we call maintenance dredging for our small creeks, where the sand is taken from the entrance of the creek and placed on the beach, primarily for water quality and flood prevention issues, but it also helps maintain a healthy beach at certain times of the year. We then have the other major permanent dredging systems, which are the Tweed bypassing system and the Gold Coast Seaway bypassing system. And these are quite unique in terms of the structures. They're both the same. They use the same technology. The Tweed River entrance sand bypassing scheme was implemented in the early 2000s basically to overcome the fundamental problem that was created by the extension of the Tweed training walls which was a blockage of sand in northern New South Wales and erosion on, in southern Queensland. It's a really important project to the Gold Coast because without it we would see that continuation over probably another couple of decades of starvation of sand on the southern Gold Coast beaches. And so the, the Tweed bypassing project now is effectively replacing nature in maintaining a natural flow of sand onto the Gold Coast beaches. The other style of dredging that's happened on the Gold Coast in the past has been massive offshore dredging where very large dredges come in and take lots of sand from the offshore region and place it on the beach. And I think these combinations of dredging activities have been an integral part of the success of the management of our Gold Coast beaches. Well, I think one of the key innovations or new ways of, of approaching dredging was when you look at where you place sand on a beach, you have two options. One is to put it right on the beach where it's very visible and the beach gets very wide. The other option is to place it just offshore and let nature move the sand onto the beach. We trialled nearshore nourishment. We created the first artificial nearshore bar of Kira and the surveyors monitored that. One of the reasons we do that is, is also political because 67 we pumped a million cubic yards onto the beach at Surface Paradise. No surprise to the engineers. Very shortly the first wave started to move that sand and, and move it into the profile, which meant that we had a visible two metre erosion scarp. If we go the other way and we create nearshore bars that move on shore, we get the criticism originally when we put it nearshore and everyone says, what are you doing? And within a couple of weeks they say, the beach is getting wider. Those ideas were in a sense trialled very effectively here on the Gold Coast by the Gold Coast City Council in the 1980s and the 1990s. And so I think there's been a great deal of innovation in the way we approach coastal management on the Gold Coast over quite a number of decades.